So finally the 4090T1 build is complete. It was definitely a journey, but the result I think was worth it. The finished build looks absolutely stunning, and as we'll go into later on, it's totally viable, even in the T1 version 1.1. Let's recap a bit for those of you who haven't seen my previous video. On one side of the case, or roughly half of it in terms of volume, we have the RDX 4090 Founders Edition with its massive air cooler, while on the other the Ryzen 5800 X3D CPU with the Mod Ultra Lobo Pump Block Combo as the centerpiece. After my last attempt at this build, check out the video if you haven't seen it already, I had to order shorter mounting bolts for the Lobo block as the stock ones were extending through the motherboard and digging into the riser on the other side. Anyway, with the new slightly shorter bolts everything was perfect and I could continue working on the build. So why is the 4090 air cooled? Well, last time I did a full custom loop in the Form T1, it was with the RDX 3080. And while it looked really cool, it was running hot and loud. I wasn't going to attempt that again, much less with a 4090. The stock cooler this time around is much more refined and much better at doing its job. Nvidia also decided to use a Honeywell face change thermal interface, so disassembly and reassembly would mean sourcing one of these special bands as well. Water cooling just wasn't as appealing to me this time around. Two things of note regarding the GPU side of the build. The first is the 3D printed support bracket I designed for the Founders Edition. This has the role of better securing the massive GPU to the case. It adds some peace of mind if the case is ever transported, but mostly it's just super extra. The second detail is the positioning of the GPU in respect to the riser mounting holes. The T1 riser mount has an additional set of holes that could be used for riser height adjustment. Using these holes has the GPU sit a bit more centered vertically which creates more room for the power cable connector. To do this however, you will need some additional mounting hardware. One of the holes we need to use is shared with a motherboard standoff coming in from the other side. My solution here was just to use a female to female standoff and a grub screw, leaving just enough usable threads on the other side. You could improvise here and find a different solution, just be mindful of this should you decide it's worth doing. This particular build features a flipped orientation PSU. This means that the flow through fan of the GPU faces against the power supply fan. This orientation also declutters the space between the PSU and the radiator, allowing for some really tidy cable management. The majority of builds I've seen use the PSU with the back against the GPU and the fan pulling air from the outside of the case. Instead, I'm feeding the air exhausted by the flow through fan of the 4090 into the PSU, which then gets exhausted topside through the radiator and to the outside of the case. The main reasoning here is that I prefer moving the hot air through the PSU rather than blocking the GPU fan or potentially creating a pocket of hot air. Before I started, I was also worried about introducing fan turbulence and this was something I did test before committing to this build and I found that there were no issues. I did remove the PSU fan grill, being mindful of not touching any of the internals as these carry a very high voltage even after the PSU has been unplugged. The captain tape seen here is just for protecting the GPU from scratches, super short screws are needed and I used washers to make sure everything is flush. As you've probably noticed, I used frosted hard tubing for this build as an extra challenge for myself but also to keep things tidy and locked in position. So that the look is complete, I'm using EK satin titanium series of fittings here and the fantastic micro rotary 90 degree fitting which I really like, especially compared to the regular 90 degree fittings which are way too bulky for small form factor builds. It's also really easy to screw these directly in position with a hex driver, just be careful not to over torque them. By the way, if you ever damage the inner o-ring of a hard tube compression fitting with improperly sanded tube ends, here's a quick way to replace the o-ring. Grab a piece of gaffer tape or anything sticky, fold it like this and use it to grab the o-ring from inside the fitting. Put the new o-ring in the fitting and keep wiggling it around until it gets in the groove. The tube that goes to the radiator port above the GPU was very difficult to bend and it did come out a bit wonky, but due to the fact that there's only about 1mm of clearance between the PSU and the edge of the motherboard, I decided that it was good enough and I was excited to move on with the build and also a bit paranoid of other things potentially going wrong. Fortunately, it was all smooth sailing from here. I admit that many times throughout the process of building this I was close to giving up, but then when it all came together and everything fit the way I imagined and seeing how small the completed build really is, it made it all worth it in the end. Filling the loop wasn't particularly hard with just one fill port, but as always it does take patience and extreme care when opening it up, making sure that the case is in such a way that the fill port becomes the highest point of the loop. This usually meant that I had to hold the case vertically and tilt it at a near 45 degree angle away from me. Cable management is also something I paid quite a bit of attention to, and here the silicone custom cables played a massive role. 
goes without saying that without these it would have been considerably harder and not nearly as nice looking. One piece of advice I can give here is that you really need to plan everything thoroughly. Think about where each cable starts from and where it needs to end up. And also think about the order in which you'll be doing things as some things can only be done in a certain order and at a particular time due to the very constrained space you'll be working with. Another thing to keep in mind is that because I'm using the 1.1 version of the case, this build was much more difficult to pull off. So if you do decide to go for something similar but in the second version of the case, you'll not only find it easier to build but you'll also have better options when it comes to cooling. I usually keep my builds on a nearby table, but this time I actually place this one on my desk behind my monitor, just so I can enjoy the tiny Form T1 case once more. As for future build ideas, I will probably move to something slightly larger. So let's see how we're doing in terms of performance, but first I want to talk about fan control. This is a free piece of software I mentioned before, but one that I feel is worth discussing in more detail. With it you can control all your fan speeds, make custom fan curves, or even more advanced stuff which we'll get to in a second. All of this from a super clean user interface. Here's how I've set it up. I wanted to have the radiator fans ramp up to fixed RPM values when things started getting heated up but I didn't want the fan speed to be tied to just the GPU or the CPU temperature, but instead whichever was running hotter. To do this, I use fan control's powerful custom sensors. I use a mix sensor that returns the highest value between two input sensors. I use the GPU core temperature as it is, but for the CPU I first apply an offset of minus 15 degrees with the offset sensor, and then I also have the temperature averaged out over 30 seconds to smooth out any spikes. I do this simply to normalize the two temperatures so that they are more or less closer together, as the CPU always has a much higher delta. I don't use this to monitor the temperatures, so it's fine if the value for the CPU doesn't make any sense. For the tests I will be running my least aggressive undervolt profile for the GPU, which is basically stock performance at a lower power draw. And for the 5800X 3D, I'm using PBO2 tuner to apply a curve optimizer setting of minus 28 on all cores, which is the lowest I can go for my particular CPU sample. In my experience, this results in a modest reduction of about 10 watts under boosting behavior. My test of choice this time around is The Witcher 3 with its next-gen update. This version of the game is very taxing on both CPU and GPU, so naturally it's going to make for a great testing tool. We're running 4K resolution, ray tracing, DLSS and frame generation are all enabled. Our first test is with the radiator fans at a comfortable level, running at 68%. The two GPU fans are running fixed speeds of 44% and 38% respectively. So, as we can see, the GPU is running well within its performance envelope, capping at 65 degrees. The CPU, however, is running pretty hot, hitting a max of 85 degrees, which is not unusual for the 5800X 3D, but we're also seeing slight throttling of the boost frequency, which was not the case on my open bench using a 140mm AIO. This is simply a limitation of the radiator setup with the two Noctua Slim fans, which have to deal not only with exhausting heat from the case, but also keeping the CPU temps under control. Not an easy task. Again, something that would be less of a problem in the T1 version 2, which has more room for normal thickness fans. Let's see what happens if we bump up the radiator fans to 80%. The GPU temperatures stay more or less the same, but we're now keeping the CPU from throttling its boost frequency, and we're topping out at 82 degrees. Let's try a different test, Returnal at 4K with DLSS, no ray tracing this time to prioritize frame rate. Here the CPU was again hitting a max of 85 degrees, but without any issues holding the max boost of 4450 throughout the test. The GPU topped out at 64 degrees. Overall, it seems that fan speeds have to be a bit on the higher side to ensure everything is running smoothly. Again, there's only so much two slim fans can do, so all things considered, these are actually pretty good results. Another point I want to touch on is the power supply orientation. As I talked about earlier in the video, my setup involves pushing GPU air exhaust through the PSU. I don't know how my setup compares to a standard orientation or indeed to the T1 version 2, but here are some observations. Firstly, I measured the air temperature coming out of the PSU to be 57 degrees after 30 minutes of The Witcher 3. Secondly, the backside of the PSU, meaning the part facing towards the outside of the case, was getting too hot to touch for more than a couple of seconds. I don't have the means to measure the temperature of the surface, but it was getting definitely hotter than the exhaust air. I know this information isn't very useful without something to compare against, but I thought it was worth mentioning as a reference for anyone else running similar setups. That's it for now, overall I'm very happy with how this turned out, all things considered. There's a 4090 Founders Edition in there, in a sub 10 liter case. That's just crazy to me. 
So in a way it exceeded my expectations and I will be running this setup for a while as a kind of longer term test and will be sure to keep you guys updated on how it's been running. I would also like to hear any suggestions or ideas you'd like me to try out in the future, let me know down in the comments. Thanks a lot for sticking until the end of this video. Bye for now.